Um, many of you have been to more than one KubeCon before, before this. Okay, cool. And how many are here at the KubeCon for the first time? Right, like most of you. Well, wel welcome to KubeCon, and I mean, it's, it's wrapping up pretty much, right? I hope you, you had a great couple of days here in Barcelona. It's sunny. I hope you, you'll still catch some of that sun before you go home. Um, and um, well, the next talk is going to be by James Rowling and uh, Christy Wilson. Uh, they can talk about using Prow and Tecton. I know what's Prow, I don't know what's Tecton. How many of you know Prow? Okay, good. And Tecton? I don't know. All right, cool. Yeah, Je no, no, I recall what Tecton is. Yeah. Wow, yeah. yes. yes. Yeah. All right, well, <laughs> over to you, folks. Okay. Hey, Christy. Hey, James. <laughs> so, I've just come back from time traveling into the past. What? You time traveled? Did you, did you see any dinosaurs? No, not that far. I only went back five years ago. I didn't want to get stuck there. <laughs> so I time traveled right back to a festival. And this is me in the festival in 2014, thinking about the state of CICD at the time. And I'll tell you, it was pretty scary. Christy, what were you thinking at the time? Uh, obviously also about CICD. <laughs> So it was a pretty scary time. I'm very pleased to be back. There was a lot of bash, a lot of scripting. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a scary time. Happy to be back. I, I have to tell you, James, though, I've been looking at a lot of CI, and I feel like it's still the same. Well, that's not too great, but come on now. It's 2019. Everything's cloud native, right? So we can do better than this. And myself and Christy are really, really pleased to be able to share some of the work we've been doing around modernizing CI CD for the future. So <laughs> this is me, uh, James Rawlings. Um, on the one on the left, if people in the back. My, by the way, there is a lot of you out there. I'm trying not to look out there quite as far. Um, so I'm the one on the left. I work for CloudBees. I work on an open source project called Jenkins X. And um, we are, I've been working for the last couple of years trying to help other developers go faster. Hi, everybody. I'm Christy Wilson. I'm a software engineer at Google. Uh, throughout the years, I've worked in a lot of different industries. I've worked in mobile, I've worked in foreign currency exchange, I've even worked in AAA games. Uh, but no matter what in industry I go to, I always end up gravitating towards work that's related to CICD and testing, and I'm really passionate about it. So these days, I'm really excited to be leading the Tecton project. Okay, so what we're going to try and do today is do a bit of context, a little bit of color around Jenkins X and Tecton. We're going to try and, as it's KubeCon, try and dive into it a little bit deeper as well. And we're going to attempt a live demo at the end as well. So fingers crossed for that. So let's start with a bit of time travel and look at the history of Tecton. So we're going to go all the way back to 2018 when the Knative project started. So the Knative serving project in particular is all about an open source solution for serverless on Kubernetes. So in order to do that, they needed a way to go from source code to deployments and to build images in Kubernetes. So that's what Knative build was all about. And people got really excited just about being able to build images on Kubernetes, and then they quickly wanted more. They wanted to run tests before they did the builds, and they wanted to create more complicated pipelines. So we created the Knative build pipelines project. And then as the scope of that increased, we moved it into its own org called Tecton, and that's where Tecton pipelines and Tecton came from. So Tecton is all about creating a spec for CICD that can be shared among vendors. So we've taken a lot of the stuff that we've been doing with CICD for years, and we've made a declarative typed model on top of it that's all built around containers. And we've made it decoupled. So the idea is that you should be able to start on a brand new project in a brand new repo and take that entire pipeline and run it against your own infrastructure. Or take pieces of that pipeline and run them on their own, or even reuse them in your own pipelines. So we started out with just pipelines, and pipelines are still at the core, but now we have other projects too, like we have the CLI project and the dashboard project, and we're incubating some event triggering projects as well. 
And we're doing this with a lot of folks. So we currently have regular contributors from CloudBees, from Red Hat, from IBM, and Salesforce. And if you're interested in joining us, we've put a lot of work into trying to make it really easy to ramp up and get started. So please join us. So that's the history of Tekton. Uh, James, can you take us back in time and tell us about Jenkins X? Absolutely. So let's actually start a little bit further back. Let's start in 2004 when Hudson was created, which evolved into Jenkins by Koske. Um, Jenkins as a CI server has had phenomenal, phenomenal success as an open source project. It's really quite outstanding some of the numbers that we, uh, that we know and how that open source community has grown. There are, thousand, there are th over a thousand plugins that have been created, been contributed. And there is, as we know, 200,000 um, installations running, Jenkins servers running. But actually, those are the only ones we know about. We're actually predicted to be closer to a million. There are 15 million Jenkins users out there, which really is quite astonishing. And really, you know, congratulations to the open source community that's helped evolve that. Um, but as said, you know, that was in 2004 when it, some of these things started, and it's evolved over time. Um, but there are some kind of challenges in present day. Um, there is a single point of failure at the moment. So if you're performing any maintenance, if you're installing a plugin or you've got some downtime, then actually you're going to miss any webhook triggers and you miss builds which is, or miss deployments as well. Um, also down to some of those successes around, around the plugin model, um, what actually happens is the plugins get installed into the JVM, onto the Jenkins server, um, and you can, you know, there's a thousand plugins that have been created, but it also means you can install a thousand plugins into your Jenkins server which could bring to instability and large JVM, because it's a JVM, large resource usage as well. And when we're considering about the cloud, actually that you're starting to pay for that as well. Um, also, there's some challenges around scaling with jobs, because when in Jenkins you actually run a job, you um, actually get executed on the Jenkins server. So you can have this kind of noisy neighbor effect where other teams within your organization still could commit a bad pipeline. And it could actually have an, an, a bad effect on your own teams as well. Um, but with you know, the advancements of technology, containerization, the cloud, it's a thing, we're really trying to start looking at how we can start to leverage more of these concepts and leveraging more of the cloud, deep pushing down into the platform more. So Jenkins X is aiming to uh, become a developer experience around Kubernetes. It isn't that easy to get started. We recognize that. We want to help all those 50 million Jenkins users and everybody else in the world help to move them to the cloud, making it super easy and continually delivering ourselves. Um, with Jenkins X, you can uh, create new applications. You can import existing applications as well on, into Kubernetes. Um, we set up all the CI, CD as well, all the webhooks and everything. We actually add in everything that's needed to be able to build, deploy, package, and run that application as well on Kubernetes. But it's not just for Kubernetes as well. You can run other traditional workloads as well that you run with Jenkins servers. Um, also, what we try and do as well, um, has anybody here read the Accelerate book? A few people. More people need to read it. They absolutely do. It's a phenomenal book. Um, I really recommend it. What Jenkins X, where we can, we've tried to take capabilities recommended by Accelerate so that we can have higher performing teams. Um, and this is just some, but obviously I would really recommend going and read it. It really kind of changed my life, I'd say. Um, okay, Jenkins X as well. So we have the concept of environments. So this is kind of new from, from, from traditional Jenkins. We've taken and extending Kubernetes and the way it's meant to be extended. So we're going to hear a little bit more about CRDs from Christy shortly, but just to keep that in mind. We are really embracing this new architecture as well. And like the plugin model we have, uh, we, the existing plugin model, we actually want to promote microservices, event-driven architectures as well, so that we can actually scale those, uh, those pipe, uh, plugins as well. Um, and also one of the really, really exciting things is we can support pluggable pipeline execution engines, which kind of then really leads us to, to Tekton. Just one quick slide on this, on this journey with Jenkins X. So we actually started with Jenkins X, starting up a Jenkins server all the time, and having it running all the time locally. But obviously we're running this on, 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 on Kubernetes and we're getting charged for when builds aren't being run. Um, then we looked at using Prowl. Quite a few people put their hands up. We're going to have a little bit more about Prowl shortly. But we were able to orchestrate and spin up using Prowl a one-shot Jenkins server, run the pipeline, and throw it away afterwards. But then we kind of looked at it. We're still using a JVM here. 
we're using a JVM inside the container to run our, run our builds. So higher resource usage, and we actually have running into some memory issues and various other things. So like a gift from, from above, uh, after that, uh, Tecton Pipelines came along, and uh, we've completely embraced it, and we're really thankful to hear more about it from, from Christy as well. Um, just one last thing. We have a Jenkins X YAML now as well, which we'll see. Um, the idea is to embrace Tecton, but also keep all those 15 million Jenkins users and more uh, same kind of level of consistency, something familiar to be able to use, like in using a Jenkins X YAML, but then leveraging the power of Tecton pipelines. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go into some more detail about Tecton. I'm going to talk about how Tecton pipelines works, and then because we're at KubeCon, I'm going to go into some details of some interesting challenges that we've had around Kubernetes. So the first thing to understand is that Tecton Pipelines is built using CRDs. So how many people have heard of CRDs? That's, that's a lot. How many people are actually using CRDs in production? Okay, yeah, fair, fair number. So if you're not familiar with them, or if you've only just heard of them, it stands for Custom Resource Definition, and it's a way of extending Kubernetes itself. So out of the box, Kubernetes comes with types like deployments, pods, and services. But with CRDs, you can add your own types and then create controllers called binaries that act on them. So on their own, CRDs are just ways of creating structured data that exists in Kubernetes. And then you create a controller that is managed and deployed into Kubernetes that acts on that data. And with those together, you basically can create declarative APIs on top of Kubernetes. And so what the controller is doing is it lets the API server know about what sort of types it's interested in, which can be your CRDs or other things that you've created instances of to realize your CRDs. And every time they're changed, they're created or updated or deleted, your controller is notified, and then it runs a reconcile loop to try to bring reality into the state that it wants it to be in. And there are a few different libraries that you can use for implementing this on your own. Uh, they kind of roughly fall into two different camps. So there's the ones that are based on client go, which are all about statically generated files. And whenever you change your CRD definitions, you have to regenerate the code that's used to interact with them. And then there are the ones based on the controller runtime, which are more dynamic and use reflection to actually inspect your types and see what their structure are uh, wh while you're running. And for, for Tecton Pipelines, we're using Knative PKG because we started out in the Knative project and because it actually works pretty well. So let's talk about how Tecton Pipelines works and what CRDs we created for it. So the most basic building block is something that we call a step. So a step is actually an instance of an image, and it's a Kubernetes container spec, which is something that already exists in Kubernetes. So this is an image with everything that you need to run it, like the arguments and the environment variables. The first new type that we added is called a task. So a task lets you declare a sequence of steps, and they are executed in order on the same node, which means that they can actually share resources on the node, like the disk. The next new type is called a pipeline. And a pipeline lets you put together tasks. So they can be run uh, concurrently, they can be run sequentially, or you can create really complicated graphs. They are not guaranteed to execute on the same node, but you can actually have inputs from one task that come from the output of another task, uh, which are specified in the pipeline. So pipelines and tasks are declared once, and they're used again and again. To actually invoke them, you create pipeline runs and task runs, which invoke pipelines and tasks. And then our final new type is called a pipeline resource, which provides runtime information to those runs. So th this is for things like, what image registry should I be uploading to? What Git repository or fork should I be executing against? So altogether, we added five types for Tecton pipelines. We have tasks that are made of steps. We have pipelines that are made of tasks. And then we invoke those using pipeline runs and task runs, and we provide runtime information with pipeline resources. And if you want to see more examples of what these look like, you can take a look at the catalog in the Tecton CD org and GitHub, and we have example tasks. And the intention is that we will have uh, well-tested, reusable tasks in this repo that you could just use right away. OK, so let's talk about some of the challenges that we've run into with Kubernetes to make this work. I'm going to talk about three different challenges. So the first one is about running steps in order. So you may remember a task runs a series of steps. They execute in order. Each one of those is a container that runs and then finishes. 
It turns out that there isn't really a very good way in Kubernetes to declare that you want a container, a series of containers to run until completion on the same node. So the solution that we have to this is very interesting, <laughs> by which I mean it's, it's hacky, but it works. Uh, so what we do is uh, we put all of the containers for your task into the same pod. And then when you declare these steps, you specify a command to run. You either do it explicitly or it's in the definition of the container itself. So what we do is we go and look up that command and we find it, and then we put our own binary into your container, which is executed instead. And then our binary waits until your container is supposed to actually execute and then executes the binary. So all the containers are actually running, but they're all waiting for their turn to run and signaling to each other when they're done. The next interesting challenge is one that I want to give complete credit to uh, uh, Alex DiCarlo for it because uh, we did not realize that we were going to run into this at all and he went and did the investigation, found the problem, reported it, and then is currently working on a solution. So all the credit goes to him for this, but it's very interesting. Um, we had been thinking about using sidecars for some of our, for, to solve some of our problems. We didn't realize that they actually don't really just work out of the box the way you might expect. So two specific problems, oh, a sidecar is uh, it's like a supporting container that you would run alongside your containers. So um, this is how systems like Istio do things like providing proxies for your containers. So you're trying to run something and there's this other container that's also running and doing some work for you. So the specific problems we ran into are, uh, we, we don't want our, if we have sidecars, we don't want our steps to actually start until the sidecars are ready, so they need to wait. And the other problem is that as far as Kubernetes is concerned, if anything is running in your pod at all, your pod is still running. And we actually want to run steps until completion. So if the sidecar keeps running, Kubernetes thinks that the pod is still up and leaves it. So the solutions that we're looking at right now are, uh, we're going to use something called the downward API so that we can tell when the sidecars are actually executing and when the steps should run. So we're taking advantage of that hacky binary that we put inside our container, and then that is checking the downward API uh, to see when the sidecars are ready and then actually executing. Um, you can look up more on the downward API if you want. It's basically a way for a container to inspect um, the state of the Kubernetes cluster without having to make a request to the API server. And then to stop the pods when the steps finish, we're going to do something equally hacky and actually change the pod spec, replace the sidecar container with a no-op container that completes immediately. And then the last issue that I want to talk about is about the outputs and inputs. So I mentioned that in a pipeline, you can take the outputs of one task and provide them as inputs to another. So this basically means you're taking some binary data that was produced by one set of containers on, on one node and you're providing it to a different node. So we have a couple ways that we've made this work. We have two that we've actually implemented and a third one that we're kind of theoretically exploring. Um, and we're also very open to other solutions if you have one. So the first one uh, is that we create something called a persistent volume claim. Uh, and, or, or PVC, uh, and we attach it to your running pods when they're running. So if we, de if we detect that you have linked outputs and inputs, we create this volume, and then your task steps can write to the volume, and then the volume is provided to any downstream tasks that need to consume it. So it turns out this isn't great, though, because not all clouds support PVCs in the same way, and also it's very slow to create and attach these PVCs. So an, alt an alternate method of doing this that we created it involves doing kind of the same thing, but you're uploading to blob storage in between tasks. And it turns out that this is also quite slow. So the theoretical solution that we're exploring is maybe in this case we figure out in advance that you're trying to do this and we actually do schedule onto the same node so you can share a disk. Okay, so those are some of, those are some of the, the gritty details of uh, pipelines. James, can you tell us a bit about how Jenkins X works? Absolutely. So um, if you haven't guessed it yet, Jenkins X loves Tecton pipelines. Um, really do encourage everybody to be looking at this. Um, we've gone all in on Tecton ourselves. We actually dog food Jenkins X. So we build Jenkins X with De Jenkins X. And we've moved all of our own repositories. I think there's maybe about 60, 70, 80 repos that are now using Tecton pipelines. Um, that's given us huge um, improvements in performance, reliability, and stability, and also reduced cloud costs as well, because just, just to be clear, there's no JVM here at all. 
We are just running in, just in Docker containers, running our commands, running our steps. Um, so we also have uh, use a pro the project called Prow. Prow is an open source project used on the Kubernetes, um, on every single Kubernetes repository out there. Also used by other projects as well. Um, comes from the testing, uh, the test infra uh, Git repository. Um, it allows us. It does many things actually. But it's uh, the TLDR would be a helps us handle webhook events. So we can kind of chat on, on, on pull requests and collaborate on pull requests, figure, sending events and triggering builds. So Jenkins X uses Prow, and uses um, uh, Tecton pipelines to run the builds. Um, Jenkins X also has this concept of a Jenkins X YAML, which I mentioned. Um, the idea of this is when Prow sends over our webhook event, we intercept this in our cluster, we then have a controller that's running, a Kubernetes controller watching the API server, and then we generate all of the Tecton resources for the build to execute. Um, we also have a concept of build packs as well, so there's a similar way for, for Jenkins users that might be familiar with this. You can actually manage these build packs set, uh, in a central place and then inherit from them in your Jenkins X YAML, or you can override steps as well. And we're gonna hopefully see this in the live demo. So this is just a, a bit around Prow, and uh, Christy found this. Uh, this it's a uh, highly technical diagram. And I think a, a shout out to, uh, to Prow for coming up with the most nautical themed components as well. I can't list them all, but uh, it's quite impressive. So there's been some good thinking behind that as well. Um, this is just um, a, a, a diagram. Really don't need to test, oh, there's lots of cameras, that's good. But you don't need to see this too much. I guess what we're trying to um, emphasize is Jenkins X is really embracing an event-driven architecture, extending Kubernetes in the way it's ex intended to be ex extended. Watching the API servers for events and then interacting and running builds. We're also integrating with any open source project that makes sense. So Vault for Secrets, for example, we've mentioned um, Tecton and Prow, many, many others as well. Um, also then using the cloud well, because we want to be using cloud storage for everything as well, so that we have resilience. Okay, wow, that was quick, okay. I'll give you a demo. Okay, ready for a demo? Let's cross our fingers. So, what I have, if people can't see this, please shout, uh, shout out. We have a Jenkins X installation already been created. It's running on Google Container Engine. It's a three node cluster. It was created with JX Create Cluster GKE. This has gone and installed a number of things. It's installed Tecton, it's installed Prowl, it's installed um, everything we need to be able to build, release, and deploy our applications. We've also, uh, out of the box, created some environments. So let's go JX get env. Now, it's a bit, of, a bit of a screen wrap here, but you can see we've got a staging environment and it's a production environment. This is where we can actually, you can predefine these, you can extend these as well. Um, we also have the concept of preview environments. But this is somewhere where we can actually dynamically spin up a new environment and actually deploy a proposed change into that preview environment so we can start collaborating and testing before we actually merge that into master. We're gonna see this in the demo. We also have this concept of GitOps. So for a staging repository, for example, everything goes into a Git repository. Any change that goes into an environment has to be approved, you have traceability, and when that, is, that change is merged, uh, an event is triggered, and then Tecton actually then performs the deployment for that, for that environment. So with that, let's go ahead and create a quick start. So uh, CD workspace. And can remember to type, yes. Okay, that's JX create quick start. Quick start. Can everyone see that okay? Anyone not be able to see that? Okay. Okay, so I've already got my, uh, my local Git credentials locally because we're gonna create a brand new Git repository and set up all the webhooks, set up all the CI and CD, everything needed to be able to build and run that. So let's use my GitHub username and we're gonna use a shared organization. Um, Let's have a new name, think of a new name. Dino, time travel, time travel, yes. 
So we're going to have a list of quick starts. We've got a bunch of quick starts, which are probably the most simplest quick starts you could possibly imagine. But it's really just to demonstrate in every different language that you care about, we can actually build and deploy and run these applications. Um, you can also extend and have your own quick starts, because these come from a Git repository. You point at Jenkins X to a GitHub organization or a Git organization, and you'll be able to get your own quick starts. So let's go with a Go quick start, because it's nice and fast. All right, OK, would I like to initialize with Git? Yes, initial Git commit message, OK. Hopefully GitHub is, is working. Doo -doo -doo. OK, so we've also added a bot user as well as a collaborator on the project, so we can actually start making uh, commenting and actually having automation around on that Git repository. All right, what should have happened here is, OK, something really, really ha happened very, very fast there. We actually, oh, here we go. Let's not do that. And wait for that. We can go and have a look at our Git repository. So let's have a look in here. We've got um, the very, very, very simple uh, Go. This is really not going to do very much. It's just going to sp uh, spin up a simple web page with a hello world message. Um, this is our example of a Go project. But then what's also interesting is we've actually done uh, language detection and added a Docker file because we know it's Go. We know how to build that. We've added a Jenkins X YAML file. We've also added Helm charts to be able to package and run that application on, on Kubernetes. We don't want to hide everything. We just want to enable bootstrap your applications. And again, this is the same on importing existing applications as well. So let's go ahead and see if we've got any builds. JX gets good build. Build logs. OK, so we see a build here, and that's running, and that's probably running along here. Let's move, make that a little bit bigger. What's kind of cool is, in the green on the end of the screen, what you can actually see is the build steps. Now, these are the multiple steps from the Tecton pipeline. So these are different containers running inside the pod. And you can see these are our logs, and we are, oh, Actually, oh, there we go. We've, had a, we've built the image. We've done a, a, build, a Docker build with Kanika. We've pushed that into GCR. I think we're down here. Yes, GCR. We've, got, we've tagged and released that project as well, so we can go back to GitHub, and we should actually see a release on here. And there we go. Version 001, which has been deployed automatically because we've just created this. And we've also created a pull request onto our staging repository, which has already been merged. Probably yes, because everything's running really, really quickly. Um, and we can see this is just adding in. This, we're using a Helm at the moment here to be able to add in that application. So any new versions or any new applications, any upgrades, you would actually get automatically updated in this repository. Um, so because that's been merged, we should have seen also, let's run that again, we have a promotion into our staging repository as well. So we can see that's actually, oh, well, that's running at the moment. And all this is going to do is take that packet, that um, Helm uh, requirements YAML from the Git repository in the staging environment, and then do uh, and apply that actually into our staging environment. Just waiting for it to start. This is a fairly new cluster, so of course uh, some of these images are just being pulled down from, from, uh, from GCR. Whilst that's going ahead, let's go and make a quick change actually. Let's go CD, what do we call ourselves? Dino time travel. Okay, let's go and check out and work onto a branch, good, be, good practices, check out minus B, work in progress. All right then, let's go and have a look at uh, IntelliJ. IntelliJ. Int. Okay, we can't find it there, let's go this way. Do -do -do. In your own time. Any time. <laughs> IntelliJ. <laughs> yes, phew, okay. There we go. All right, let's just uh, let's take that away, because that's from an old project. Let's go file, open. Now, workspace, dino travel. Come on, James, hurry up, hurry up. Dino time travel. Oh, this one does fine. 
Okay, so we've got our project. We're working on a branch, remember. Uh, let's go and make a brief change into our main Go. So Jenkins X loves Barcelona. Barcelona. There we go. Carlos will probably kill me for spelling that wrong. I probably have. Okay, we also made the change there, but let's also have a look at our Jenkins X YAML. Now, if you can see this, we're actually looking at the inheriting from a build pack. That build pack is on GitHub somewhere. You can craft your own build packs. But what's really, really cool now is we have, should work now, we now have a generated schema that we build and release on, it, on every release of Jenkins X. So we have syntax validation and code completion from, in your IDE to be able to start extending that build pack. So you can now start extending, overriding, adding steps before and after as well. So it's really, really powerful, and you get a lot faster feedback as developers to be able to try things out, experiment with your pipelines. OK, if I can remember exactly how to do this one, pipeline config, pipelines, pull request. Yes, on a pull request, pre-build, let's add in a step of, OK, container, uh, busy box. Busy. How are we doing for time? Busy box. Busy box. And we're going to give it some, a command to run of echo. Let's give it some args of on rocks. All right, let's go and commit those changes. Let's um, improve. We're going to push that up to our work in progress branch, and we're going to make a pull request onto our master branch, which is going to trigger our automated CI that we set up in, automatically at the start. So let's go and have a look at this. OK, we can see our branch of work in progress here. OK. And we're going to create a pull request. And remembering about Prowl, this is going to send a webhook event into the cluster. Prowl is going to intercept this, going to hand handle this, and then it's going to start commenting back on this pull request. Some sim simple plugins like it analyzes the size of the change and helps for reviewers. It's also said it's not approved yet, so that's OK. This just means we can do some real sensible, really takes really, really seriously these, this some good, great work on pull requests. Um, and this is you know, absolutely, we got to, can't emphasize the seriousness of, of all of this. OK, so <laughs> what we're talking about is being able to collaborate. This is what we're trying to demonstrate. We want to merge as much, we want to shift as much as we can do into the CI, shifting left, to shift our security checks, that's automating our testing, so we can be as sure as possible when you merge that change, then that can be shipped through to your, to your production environment. Let's give that confidence pre merge to master. Thank you very much, Christy. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. All right, OK. So what that's actually doing is um, it's running a Tekton build. That's going to dynamically create us a preview environment, if, I'm, if you remember working before. Let's also say, did that other build happen that we were looking at before? JX get applications. So that's our dino time travel. This is our message from our Golang, simple Golang quick start that we had. Now that's running in our staging environment, because that was automatically deployed, right? OK, what we should have now is that is now running. That's doing a build. Let's go and have a look at those builds. JX gets build logs. logs. You can see that running. Oh, we've had a comment by the bot user on our pull request, that that preview environment has been created, and we've taken that change and deployed that out into our preview environment. Let's go and have a look at this. And here we see. So this really means we can start collaborating a lot more on pull requests and shifting that left, making it as sure as possible that, we've, that that change is supposed to do what it's supposed to do. OK, I think that's pretty much from, from, a, from a demo point of view. Um, when that, we, we would approve that, by the way, and that would get rolled out through to our environments as well. Let's have a look at, back at this. OK, so uh, another um, interesting thing that you might want to take note of is in March, we were really excited to donate these projects to a new foundation called the Continuous Delivery Foundation. 
So this is a foundation that we've created as a place where we can all collaborate and really push forward CICD into, into the modern day. I lost my clicker. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> but, but we're absolutely uh, excited because just as, um, as Kubernetes and other projects, open source projects can flourish around with the CNCF as well, we can get some of those standardizations around CICD, which we all absolutely need. We want to help everybody to be able to build better software faster. This is a, a, this is a great foundation to help us, <laughs> enable us to do that. Uh, and so that's all that we have for you today. If you're interested in more, you can check out info about the CDF. Um, and if you want to dive in and get started on our projects, you can check out the quick starts. You can check out the contributing guides that we have in all of our repos as well. And that's it. Thanks very much. <laughs>